This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stay tuned to the end to learn how you can get two months of premium membership for free. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how Mantaflow guides work in the smoke and fluid simulations. If you don't know what Mantaflow guides are, they are located in the domain settings. If I scroll down here, you will see this panel. If I open up, you can see these different settings. Basically how this works is you can give some velocity to the smoke or the fluid depending on which one you want using another simulation or using an object. In this video, I'll be creating three different simulations. One is going to be smoke that looks like liquid. Then we're gonna be creating a fluid simulation that looks like smoke. And then finally, we'll be using an object to give some velocity to the smoke and creating a tornado effect. Let's get started with the first one. So for this first simulation, we have a basic domain. These are just the default setting with the domain type set to liquid. We're gonna be doing a little bit of tuning over on these settings, and then we're going to be duplicating this domain and the flow object and switching over to a smoke. The time scale on this fluid, I'm gonna set it to 0.5, just so it slows down the simulation. If I scroll down, we don't need to set up any other settings. The only one that I'm gonna change is the end frame. I'm gonna set this to 130, so the simulation lasts for 130 frames. Another thing you're gonna to want to do is set a custom cache folder right here. As you can see here, I have two custom folders. I have a smoke cache and a fluid cache. Since we're baking in the fluid one, I'm gonna select the fluid cache and then click accept. And then we're going to set up the inflow object. So I'm going to select the inflow right here. I'm gonna turn on initial velocity and give the Z direction so it shoots the fluid down. I'm gonna set this to negative 0.3. Another thing that I'm gonna do is animate this use inflow node. So what I want is for the fluid to emit for 40 frames and then turn off at 41. So I'm going to skip to frame 40 and then hit that little box on the side to add in a keyframe. I'll move one frame ahead, uncheck this, and then add in another keyframe. And now let's bake in the data. We don't need to bake in the mesh or particles or anything like that. The only thing that we need to bake in is these settings. So go ahead and click on bake. All right, the bake is done. Now we can play our simulation and this is what it looks like. So now what we're gonna do is set up a smoke simulation to follow the flow of this fluid simulation. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and name our objects so we know exactly what they are. This domain, I'm gonna call this one fluid domain. And then for the inflow, I'm just gonna call this fluid and then flow, just like that. Now let's select both of these objects, press M and move them to a new collection. We'll call this collection fluid. Next, we're going to duplicate these objects. So to do that, press Shift D and then right click. Press M and move them to a new collection once again and we're gonna call this collection Smoke. Over in the Smoke collection, let's go ahead and name our objects. This object is going to be Smoke Domain and then this object is going to be Smoke and then Flow. Now before you do anything else, let's jump to that collection by hitting three on our keyboard and as you can see here, we are in collection three select the domain and go over to the domain settings and scroll down. Before you free the data, you need to set another folder right here. If you were to free the data, it would also free the data over in this top fluid simulation. So go ahead, set a new custom folder. I'm gonna select the smoke cache right here and then click accept. Now that we've set a custom folder, we can now free this data and switch up some of the settings. So first off, I'm gonna switch this over to gas since we're using a smoke simulation. And for the resolution divisions, I've noticed when using guides, it bakes a lot slower. So I'm only gonna set this up to 96. Then we're gonna scroll down to the guides panel and open up this. And then for the velocity source, we're gonna leave as domain and we're going to select the fluid domain right here. So now what this is going to do is it's going to take the velocity of the fluid domain add that to the smoke, and it will look like the smoke is flowing just like fluid would. The weight value controls the amount of lag of the velocity. So if you were to set this to a higher number, the smoke would kind of lag behind the fluid. If you set this to a lower number, it'll be a lot more uh, strain to the fluid. So we're gonna set this to a lower number so it's a lot closer. And then for the velocity factor, this basically gives the smoke some velocity and the higher you set this to, the, the faster the smoke will move. I'm just gonna leave it at the default value. I've also noticed if you turn on adaptive domain or noise, it sometimes breaks the simulation. So I'm gonna leave both of those settings off. Select your inflow object and switch this over to smoke. And that's basically all you really need to do. 
The info is already animated correctly, so now let's go ahead and bake in our simulation. We've set a custom folder down here, so we don't need to do anything else. Let's click on bake. The bake is done, now we can play our simulation, and this is what it looks like. So you can see the smoke comes down here and acts like fluid. So now, after you set up a quick scene, you can get a render that looks something like this. Now let's move on to the liquid that looks like smoke. Alright, here we are in a new scene, and for this simulation, I've set up a flow object just to emit smoke going up, and then I've also set in just the basic settings in the smoke domain. We're going to leave everything as it is, the end frame I set to 100, let's go ahead and bake this data in. Once we do this, we'll go ahead and move on to the fluid object, and then we will set up the fluid to look like smoke while it rises up and goes along the sides. Alright, the simulation is done baking, we can go ahead and play this, and this is what it looks like. So now we're going to set up the fluid to look like this. To do that, we're going to jump to collection 2 by hitting 2 on our keyboard, and for this simulation, I've set up a basic domain. I have a flow object here set to geometry. Over in the domain settings, we're going to set up a couple of things here. First off, the time scale. I'm going to set this down to a value of 0.3. This will slow down the simulation because I've noticed when working with fluid and smoke, sometimes it looks really fast. So I set that to 0.3. Next, we're going to scroll down over to the guide section and turn this on and open up this panel. First off, we're going to select that smoke domain. So open up this and select the smoke domain right there. Then the next thing we'll do is we're going to leave the weight at 1 because I want it to lag behind just a little bit. And then with the velocity factor, I'm going to bring this all the way up to 25. When I was testing for this tutorial, a velocity factor of 25 did work pretty well. But when I was recording this tutorial and I set it to 25, it totally broke the simulation. So I decided to bring it back down to a value of 2 and it seemed to work just fine. So with it set to 25, we can go ahead and bake this in. And also make sure you set custom folders right here for each, the smoke and the fluid simulation. So with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and bake data. Once this is done, we'll bake in the mesh and then we'll see how it looks. All right, the baking is done and I did switch the velocity factor back down to a value of two because 25 did not really work. So once we play the simulation, we can see this is what it looks like. The fluid rises up just like the smoke would, it comes down just along the sides. And that looks pretty cool. So now what we can do is go ahead and bake in the mesh. So turn that checkbox on, open up that panel, and bake in the mesh. We'll take a look at this and then we'll create the last simulation. The bake is done, now let's play our simulation with the mesh and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. For the last simulation, we're going to be using an object as the guide for the smoke simulation. The object that we'll be using is this cylinder. It's going to be following this curve, dragging the smoke along with it and creating a tornado effect. This curve right here is just going in a spiral going upwards. We have a flow object and for this flow object, I'm going to set the initial temperature down to zero. The reason for this is because if we don't set this to zero, the smoke will rise straight up. I'm also going to jump over to the domain settings and set the buoyancy density to zero and the heat to zero as well. So the smoke will just stay in the exact spot and then we'll be using the guide, this cylinder, to drag it along. So now let's go ahead and set up the animation. I'm going to select my cylinder, go over to the modifier tab and add in a curve modifier. From there, we can select the spiral that I've created just like this and then we're going to animate this. So we're going to jump to frame 1, drag this along the x axis till it's below the domain, hit i and go location. Then we'll jump to the end, press g and x, drag this all the way along until it reaches the end right there, hit i and add in another keyframe, location. And you can see that this cylinder is going straight through the flow object and that is what we want, so it will catch the smoke and drag it along. Now that we've animated the cylinder, let's go ahead and create the simulation. I'm going to jump over to the physics tab with the cylinder selected and click on fluid and set the type over to effector. The effector type is going to be on guide. Here we can see three different settings. We have the surface thickness. This is the amount of thickness around the object that will be considered as an effector. I'm going to drag this up to a value of 0.1. The velocity factor takes into account the velocity of the cylinder and this factor right here and then it uses the guide mode to do a little bit of the math. 
So right now it's set to override. We have maximum, minimize, override, and average. Basically it takes these two values, it averages it, it overrides it, or it maximizes it depending on which one you choose. I'm gonna select average. From there, we can select our domain and go over to the guide settings in here. Turn on guides and open up this panel. For the velocity source, we need to set it to effector. And then for the weight, I'm gonna drag that down to one so it doesn't lag behind, it stays with it. And then for the size, I'm gonna bring that down to four as well. And that's basically all we really need to do. The end frame I set to 120 and we don't need to set a custom folder here because we're only working with one simulation. Now we can go ahead and bake the guides in. Once this is done baking, we will bake in the settings, and then we can see how it looks. Now that the guides are done baking, we can scroll up to the settings over here, and you might notice the resolution divisions is grayed out. So if you want to change the resolution, you need to do that before you bake in the guides. But since I'm gonna leave it at 64, I'm just gonna click on bake data. And finally, the bake is done, and we can go ahead and take a look at how this looks. If we play our simulation, we can see this is how it's looking like. You can't really see it too well, so I'll just go into rendered view, and here we go. Look at that. If we skip all the way to the end, we can see the smoke is going in a tornado effect. So there you go. That is how you use guides in Mantaflow. Make sure if you use some of the techniques shown in this video and you created something cool, make sure to send it to me at BlenderMadeEasy over on Instagram. Thanks again for watching, and now on to today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together and learn and develop their skills. The classes there are taught by professionals and cover a variety of topics, including illustration, design, photography, animation, and so many more. If you can think of a topic, Skillshare has it. There's even a bunch of Blender classes as well. You want to learn about rigging? That's actually one that I should probably take because I know barely anything about rigging. They've got modeling, materials, game design, all of the stuff that you can think of in Blender, they probably have it. Creating an entire house using Blender 2.8, that's actually one that I uploaded. I assume you're watching this video because you enjoy learning and being creative, just like myself, and Skillshare makes it so easy, because most of the classes there are under 60 minutes so anyone can fit them into their schedule. With the premium membership, you get unlimited access to everything on their website. And not to mention, but the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. That's right, less than $10. I've been wanting to get into photography, so I decided to check out the City Landscape Photography class by Jamal Berger. So while I'm learning about photography, I'm also taking that knowledge and applying it to my own architectural and city renders in Blender. With everyone being stuck at home, instead of watching YouTube videos for hours on end, why don't you use that time to pick up a new skill or hobby? Skillshare is offering the first thousand people who click the link in the description two months of premium membership for free. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description, grab your two months for free, and start learning. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and that's going to be it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial.